first time in Colorado. This is our campsite here at Great Sand Dunes National Park. And there's no way we can fit our 28 foot Airstream in here. I don't even think I could make the turn. Zephyr, what's going on outside? Come on. What do you see? Today we stopped in Manhattan, Kansas to go to the Midwest Dream Car Museum. So this is a problem with this Harvest Host. We're right on the expressway and it's a little bit on the loud side. So that's a little disappointing. You made it sleeping a little bit more difficult, but really no worse than staying in a truck stop. So we're gonna go in and check out what the Harvest Host has as far as wine and such, and maybe pick up a bottle. So just come along with us. We made it to our destination for the night. We are staying here at Harris Casino in Anderson, Indiana. It's just um, parking for the night in a parking lot. It's nothing fancy, not a harvest host or anything like that. But we stayed here on the way out and it actually worked out pretty nice. It's, it's a good breaking point. We've been trying to do about 300 to 350 miles a day on this trip. And so this worked out to be just about 350 miles. We got us here about six o'clock and that's after stopping for lunch and getting fuel so pretty good drive and tomorrow we have a shorter drive day we have a few things in mind that we want to stop and do so we're not probably going to make as much distance but it'll be entertaining and we're going to save that for late the next thing in the video so we're going to go to bed but for you guys it will be the next thing coming up so hang on when you see the every direction it will give you eyes give you hope it 
it'll give you perspective Today we're heading into the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. And this is the second time I've been here, but Diane's first time. We are, I was here a couple years ago, and I wanted to bring Diane back, and we are going to be in this area today, so I thought it was a great opportunity. A lot of neat things to look at here. They have a number of presidential Air Force Ones and a wide variety of airplanes. It's all indoors, which is nice for a day like today because it's kind of gray and cool. And, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll take you guys along. Come on. This is the presidential wing of the museum. All presidential planes carry the designation 26,000 on the tail, except when the president is aboard, then it's considered Air Force One. This is a plane that was used by President Kennedy when he flew to Dallas on that fateful day in November. It was also a plane that President Johnson was inaugurated on, or sworn into office on, I should say, and President Kennedy's body was returned to Washington. The display behind me represents the hard work that the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team, or EODs, do. This has a special uh, relationship to me because my nephew, Matt Hill, was an EOD in the Air Force for 20 plus years and just recently retired as a Senior Master Sergeant. What did you think of your first trip to the National Air Force Museum? It's very impressive. It's a lot to do in one day, so if you can take a couple days, there is no admission cost. But I would, if we had a couple days, I would have taken a couple days. Yeah, there's a lot to see, and you know, we went to the back first and saw the um, Air Force One exhibit uh, and worked our way reverse because the crowds were kind of heavy in the beginning of the buildings but their buildings are set up by different wars so there's a building that has Vietnam War and Korean War there's World War two uh, World War one um, a lot of different uh, eras of the military Air Force military and some of the space shuttle and astronauts yeah there's also <laughs> space shuttle the astronauts experimental planes in there there's just so much. There's a lot to see, including the Memphis Bell. You can get to see that. So you also see the boxcar, which is the plane that dropped the atomic bomb onto Nagasaki, um, that, which ended World War II. 
So there's just a lot of history and a lot of different things to see in this in this museum. So well worth it if you're in the Dayton, Ohio area to plan a couple of days or at least a day if you can or a half a day and come and see what you can of this. You're going to love it and you're going to want to come back. Yeah, it, it, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of history. A lot of history. Um, big building, so it's safe to kind of walk around there. You're not close to a lot of people. It, it's really a very, very interesting place to visit. After our visit to the museum, we made a stop here at Fatback's Barbecue for dinner. And let me tell you, it was really good. So we we're going to add that to the recommendations if you're in the Dayton area. Stop at Fatback's. Now the parking lot might be a little bit tight, but we found room to park the Airstream in it. This is where we stopped to spend the night. We're at the Airstream Club International Headquarters here in Jackson Center, Ohio. And this is also the home base for Airstream where they're all manufactured. We drove by the factory on our way through here. We'll show you a video of that. It's a brand new factory just opened the beginning of this year. So that's pretty cool. And they're pumping out Airstreams as fast as they can. Now not everyone can stay at this location. First you have to have an Airstream. Then you need to be a member of the Airstream International Club, which we are. Hence the red numbers on the front of our Airstream. And then you would need to contact the headquarters and get permission to overnight, which they usually will give you without any problem. Now they were doing some work here this weekend uh, on behalf of the club. And it was a question of whether there would be any room, but I was able to contact a couple people that were working here, and they made sure that we had a spot for the night. So this worked out really good. It's courtesy parking. We actually had electricity, which was awesome. Wasn't expecting that. If I look over there, there's a dump station. And so, you, you know, if you're a member of the club, you can actually dump your trailer here while you're here. Um, you can also uh, stay in Jackson Center at the Airstream Terraport. It's a number of sites. I think there's 16 sites there that they set aside for people who have service work. Um, if you're coming through, you can stay there if you have an Airstream. They do charge $10 per night. Um, that was an option for us, but I figured, well, I knew a couple people that, and I knew someone who was going to be here, so we decided to stay here. Our winter trip has come to an end. Yep, we made it home. And it's cold here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty chilly here. We were gone a little over five months. Yep, five and a half months. Yeah, and the time certainly has gone pretty quick. But it won't be long, we'll be on another trip someplace or a weekend getaway or something, so. Yeah, something we... to look forward to next month. Well, if you like this travel video and you want to see more, what should they do? Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. And hit the bell for notifications. That way we notify you when we post new videos. We try to post videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you follow along in our journey. Until the next time. We will see you down the road. See you down the road, everybody. Bye. Bye.